All right. Hello and welcome today, guys, to our fun Freaky Friday over here at Spyglass Guys. We like to call these Fridays fun Freaky Fridays whenever we take these really awesome monster-sized day trades on the day, guys, especially going into the weekend because it always feels good to take a really nice zero DT call or put option and just have that option go more than 100 or 200 percent going into the weekend guys because there's no better feeling than that uh, and without further ado today guys the recap is going to be real quick and straightforward to the point with a little sort of recap in gamma delta and we're going to be talking about the trade of the day that we ended up taking over here at spyglass guys so without further ado let's get right into the video so guys first things first here let me uh pull up the sort of four all right perfect so we have ndx qqq spy and spx uh today guys we were Really sort of eyeing SPY and SPX trades today, guys, at opening bell. We noticed that kind of across the board, there was a couple of potential ideas. Uh, some of the people were looking at trading. Let's see, what was it? It was AMD. Uh, the Amazon trade ended up going and printing. But let's focus mainly just on SPY and SPX today, guys, from a Delta Gamma perspective, or also known as the SPY Goss way. Uh, so check this out, guys. Right over here at opening bell, right as we're kind of going back to the 6.30 sort of mark here in the morning, guys, right as we were getting uh, ready to open. As you can clearly see, major gap down in the marketplace, right? Non-farm payrolls, NFP news decided to come out. Uh, well, not decided to come out, was scheduled and slated to come out. And as you guys can clearly see here, look at this massive delta level just basically sitting here at 489 SPY, guys. Holy crap. Does Spyglass make trading easy or what? Because right here in the pre-market, yes, as you can see here, so I, I have followed time off. Uh, as you can see here, I'm doing control click on each one of these candles to load sort of a new sort of time slot. And as you can see here, this is the 6.30, uh, you know, right at the opening bell. As you can see, this is our sort of opening bell look with the Delta and Gamma situation. Guys, remember Gamma's on the left and Delta is over here on the right. And as you guys can clearly see, that 489 SPY was about 2 million positive Deltas as a sort of buy. Yes, I understand that the Gamma pressure at opening bell is also right here too. But guys, it's opening bell. We just gapped down something like 30, 40 points. This is the Delta spot to be buying in the tape. I put out a huge major sort of call out and letting everybody know, hey guys, today's going to be one of those days where you're going to want to buy calls from opening bell on SPY on the zero DT market. And yes, you named it hold all day or target a significant gamma level move up, which is what I ended up personally doing myself. So with the SPY confirmation, let's also double confirm that SPX was also giving the same sort of vibe and idea, so that way we can also increase our conviction because SPY and SPX is the most difficult sort of product to trade in this market. Uh, oh, let's see here. Oh, that also reminds me, guys, we added two extra fun little uh, updates to our thing. As you can see over here on this little like refresher button thing up here, I don't know if you guys can see my mouse, but here I'll just refresh this top left one real quick. Oop. So if you go to the nice sort of top right corner of the window or something like that, you can now sort of automatically refresh and reload that window really quickly rather than having to do the uh, refresh button on like your browser or something by doing like F5 or Control R, which is Control Reload, reload the page, I think. Um, anyways, back uh, over here talking about SPY and SPX, the two bottom graphs. As you can see over here on SPX, guys, the Delta situation pretty much fairly from opening bell was also so essentially just screaming the same thing calls 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 uh, that's what's so beautiful guys about uh, just market movements and manipulation in this game is right when something is going down NFP is really bad a lot of retail is possibly sitting there saying oh wow look at this price action it's really bad it's got to be bearish let's go short maybe there's some you know technical factors or something that other people are looking at in uh, possibly using to sort of influence their trading movements, guys. But we see through all the noise. We see through all the bullshit over here at Spyglass, guys. And that's why we trade this market from a sort of top-down approach where we look at deltas, gammas, uh, option volume premium, uh, and then lastly, the delta impact of the day, guys. So anyways, basically went into calls right at opening bell here and actually a little bit in pre-market over here on futures. I actually started buying some futures when Spy was perfectly at this 489. You really just can't make this up, guys, with deltas. I mean, a lot of people are sitting there wondering and scratching their heads, why did the market decide to bounce at this 489 spot, guys? Well, it's very simple. Delta. And a lot of people do not know about Delta. They think that this Delta thing is maybe either just this straightforward scam or this weird thing that just doesn't work because no way this could work, especially from the regular methods of trading that I personally know. Well, guys, I get it. A lot of traders are stubborn out there to learn about this and sort of uh, have an open mind when it comes to looking at Deltas as, and especially Gamma. <laughs> But uh, you guys got to give it a try. It's really just next level. It really does make trading just that simple. Um, 
And then especially over here on in SPX index, you know, seeing that the Delta Gamma situation was pretty much extremely positive all the way as high, you know, to about this 49.50. I said, guys, we're buying zero days right at opening bell and we're holding to 49.40, 49.50. And oh boy, did that play out perfectly. And as we go forward over time over here, so I'm just doing this nice little control, uh, control click. I know you can't really see it super well. Uh, once we got to that nice level over here, guys, I was telling everybody, based on the gamma situation, based on, you know, the move that we've just now experienced on SPY and SPX, this is probably a smart area to definitely start looking to sell, guys. I was telling everybody, you have to treat gamma with a mount with a massive, massive amount of respect, especially when it goes to looking at sort of like walls and just main sort of gamma target levels in the marketplace, guys. Gamma is seriously no joke because what can happen is we go long based on some delta principles, right? So we're buying this 489 SPY. And then once we get to these gamma targets, which would respectively be 495 on SPY and you know, 4950, 4940, this whole range over here in SPX, what can happen is you can see massive movements like this, by the way. We think this move, just, just so everybody knows, we think that this was dealers coming in and sort of giving a little bit of a heads up on their intention of the market up here, guys, around this 495. We believe that this was a massive major sort of market maker dealer sort of front running their own sort of level over here on SPY and both SPX combined, you know, letting SPX kind of come up a little bit because SPY deltas, or I'm sorry, SPY gamma hadn't necessarily just hit yet. But because the SPY major massive gamma call wall was at 495, we were just preaching and screaming all day long, guys, especially myself, warning everybody, this is gamma, this is gamma, this is gamma. I don't care if we go 496, I don't care if we go 497. You have to understand that you do not want to be long anymore at 495, guys, because we don't trade like 90% of all the other traders out there using gamma as a sort of indication of market direction. We trade using delta, using market direction, and then knowing gamma is the spot to get out from those trades on market direction, right? That's what's so beautiful about Spyglass. It really is just that awesome <laughs> um, and just that simple. Anyways, uh, yeah, so right when we get to this area, guys, uh, we're no longer basically in calls. And then right over here in this area, the market does eventually go and break that 495. But I started giving a major massive warning to all the people in the group today saying, guys, you're going to want to watch out about this 495. Don't be tempted. Don't get emotional like a lot of retail traders do. Don't start looking at the marketplace like, oh, you know, it's bullish market forever. It's never going down again, etc. And what happens towards the bell at the end of the close, guys? Major monster dealers, massive amounts of liquidity, sell orders start coming in. And guys, this could potentially potentially be that sort of start of that major unwind that a lot of big players have been looking in the marketplace for just weeks and actually about two months now we personally in this group uh myself specifically have been or has been extremely bullish guys for a very long time and i always tell everybody the only way to sort of stop a great massive bull or bear run in the marketplace is one or two ways one you get to a sort of major massive gamma call or put wall area right so very large or if not the largest source of gamma and dealers decide to enact sort of a buyback or an unwind in hedges with a follow-through and delta the next day or the previous uh next couple of days or you just get an OPEX expiration because you have all that gamma slash delta that's going to be coming out of the marketplace and that can open up the market to the other side of the sort of coin when it goes into, you know, positive deltas or negative gammas. But I'm always, or positive deltas or negative deltas. Sorry, my, my mistake. But I'm always telling everybody, don't just short the market because you see a level or because you see sellers come in or anything. So like a lot of people today saw this move and were probably like, oh, that's it. We got to chase. We got to get short. We got to get short. Here it comes. Here comes the crash. Here it comes. And I'm just sitting here saying, guys, no, this is gamma. We're not taking trades based off of a gamma induced hit. We're taking trades based off Delta. Let the Delta tell us as traders what the dealers and what the big players in the marketplace are trying to do. And if you heeded that advice today, guys, it saved you a big pain in the ass headache of just trying to once again short the market before it's actually overdue to go down. Now, guys, unfortunately, we have sort of hit the major spy call wall in the marketplace at this point. So going into next week, going into the weeks you know, to come, there could actually be a major shift in Delta now. What I always tell everybody is just be calm, let the deltas show us what they want to show us, and then trade from the delta situation, right? Especially when it comes to SPY and SBX. Because guys, I'm telling you, when these big giant players are ready to start buying or when they're ready to start selling, you will see a shift in market sentiment. It's not just going to magically just go down out of the blue one day, even on something like FOMC where it's just like, oh, that's it, you know, time to crash futures 90 points now. Because the very next day, 
you see these massive sort of crazy V-shaped buybacks. And I know a lot of traders are maybe looking at, at that saying, oh, it's the Vanna, oh, it's the charm, which, yeah, we do respect Vanna and charm in here in terms of a sort of passive side of the trade. But that's not why we believe we get these massive V-shaped buybacks. We get them, guys, because all the deltas are still to the upside. So if you look at the SPX index, right, and this is a feature that's coming uh, later on in our side, guys, in terms of different expirations, we look at that 4850 SPX when the market fell down to that level on uh, FOMC day as a beautiful buying opportunity because that's a very massive, positive, strong delta level on the SPX index. So no wonder the market's going to sit there the very next day and even today too from earnings and all this other bullcrap that's going on and continue to rally and make those monstrous highs, guys. Uh, and now that we finally sort of hit the main center of Gamma on SPY, the only Gamma that's left newsflash is this 5,000 SPX guys and look at that negative delta that's just kind of chilling at this level guys if I've sort of fast forward and or fast forward in time here you got negative 827,000 negative delta sort of maybe given a hint hint at a certain level to come in the marketplace uh, that could be a potential short of a lifetime uh, so we're just going to see how this plays out going into next week follow the deltas really use spy SPX and try to uh, be on the side of QQQ when taking indices trades guys I don't know if anybody was watching QQQ today but even QQQ was giving this very nice, as you can see here, as I just kind of click throughout the day here, very, very, very nice bull market delta sort of vibe once again. So bears, it's just not time. And I know a lot of retail saying, here comes the crash, here comes the crash. Uh, but guys, we have to let these deltas tell us what they want to do in terms of actually going and taking a convictional trade, shorting the marketplace to the downside. So all right, guys, have a good weekend, and I'll see you guys on Monday.